Hi, my name is Anamika Hops, and this is The Art Friend Show, where every conversation focuses on getting to know the essence of creativity itself. I'd love to invite you as well to join me inside of Art Friends School, where we go deeper into these topics and join in with other art friends around the world. Thanks so much for joining us, and let's get to the show. Welcome to the Art Friend Show. Here's an artist you're gonna love to know. Hi, my name is Anamika Hops. I'm an artist in Portland, Oregon, and I'm going live 100 days in a row to create the Art Friend Show. Today's guest is Jennifer, and I'm gonna invite her in right now. Yay! Hi! Hi, <laughs> Hi. Hi Jennifer! Can you introduce yourself? Tell us where you are and show us some of your art. Yes. Um, hi, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is so exciting. <laughs> um, I'm Jennifer Arst, and I'm in Oakland, California. Um, and we finally got some sun. We had a whole bunch of rain for a while. And this is my home studio. So I took over my living room and um, we, I basically put a garage thing over here uh, to load up with all of my art stuff. And then I've got some pieces in progress that I've been working on, but I basically do a lot of really big, bold, Wow. paintings and colors and like lots of action um action marks I think are, are is the best way to say it some of those are just my favorites and yeah yeah and it kind of came from like I've been sitting at the computer for a lot of my career mm -hmm. and I was like what I need to do is move around <laughs> yes. yes yeah you have such a cool backstory in how you decided to pivot into painting and we'll hear some of that we'll hear some of that today so can we see a couple more pieces of your work? And yes. I want to talk about that risk taking and in the bold move thing. All do. right. So oh, let's see. This one, I, it's so funny. I can't really see what I'm showing very well. But this one was one of the first where I really took some big risks with like making some of these really, really bold marks. And I don't know, that one was really, that one was really, really fun. And then I've got, oh, I've got to move oh. this out a little. Oh my God, I want to come play there. <laughs> <laughs> you should, you should come down. <laughs> Great, the, I will. The, um, the, I, I did a whole ocean series and like, so it was kind of the same idea of moving. I had a mm. lot of, blues moving and kind of to show yeah. a bunch yeah. of like water energy and I'm going to put the phone here and grab a couple others that oh. are in that same series. Look at your, look at your home. What a, just a stylish, gorgeous place to have a life. <laughs> it is kind of funny because I work from home. Like it's, Whenever it gets messy, I get just so crazy. I'm like, I've got to fix this. But this is another where I was just playing with the big blues and the marks and the energy and capturing like water yeah. and motion yeah. wow. and like trying to play with negative space. So yeah. it was really, it's really fun to like sit, like take something you love and try to translate it into a piece of work, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. I love your work and I love the embrace of like material that comes from working with the poured paint in that way. And you're, you're like allowing us to really see it. You're, you're not over, you know, <clears throat> some of us like to do a million layers <laughs> and that is also valid. But I want to talk to you about this because we had an interesting conversation starting when we were prepping and then I was like, let's save this for the interview yeah um so actually why don't you why don't you kind of introduce the concept and then we'll dig in okay so one of the things that I struggle with is a lot of my work is a big quick brush stroke so there's a lot of planning ahead of time yeah and you pick your colors and whatnot and there's like I actually like you kind of practice almost like a yo yeah. yoga practice like the moves yeah you have to do the moves <laughs> yeah. totally it's totally, totally. Moves. Yeah. But on occasion, it just falls flat. Yeah. And then I'm stuck with, I don't quite know what to do next. And I have a perfect example of a painting I totally ruined. 
Oh, I should say it's not ruined. It's got two ideas and I tried to come in, but those markers are so, when they're crisp and fresh, to use your word, like it, yeah. it feels alive. But yeah. then whenever I come back in and try to calm it down so I could attempt again, I feel yeah. like I lose something and I don't know, I don't know the best way through it at the moment without like yeah. pushing it aside and starting over. Fully. Fully. Yeah. I, I hear you. There's a couple of, you know, teaching and mentoring for so long. I come up, I end up coming back to the same things again and again that, that resonate for me or for other artists. And one is like, we've always got to be willing to destroy our work <laughs> yeah. in the effort to finish it. Right. Cause a lot of work will remain unfinished unless we're willing to make those bold or courageous final few decisions to take it all the way. But that often means we destroy it until we learn not, no, I think forever, honestly, we'll, we'll be kind of straddling like that. And it, it makes me think of this, like if, um, you know, you're, you're skiing or sledding and there's like a bump, you know, in it. And it's like, you got to have enough momentum to get all the way up. And that would be when the painting is finished. But sometimes we overshoot and then you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and uh, your work really might, it seems like it's the kind of work that if it goes over, there is no return because part of what keeps it so fresh is like seeing that canvas or like not like there's, you just take a complete risk when you make each piece. Yeah. Actually, strangely, just hearing you say that, I was nodding. I'm like, yes, that's that's correct. It's almost like I've been, I wanted that to be true, but I was scared to be wasteful. And yeah. but I think I think you're right. I think it just has. That is that's the work I'm excited about making. Yeah, and that's that's it. <laughs> there you go. I mean, yeah, for you, it really might be the thing where if if you overshoot, which will probably happen thirty percent of the time, like. You know, maybe you just like cut that one off the stretcher bars. Yeah. Get a new canvas. Or maybe you have like a downline of someone who can paint over it because their style works for it. Oh, that's <laughs> a really yeah. good idea though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're in, uh, you've got Lily or Mady or all these people who would probably love to buy canvases off you for some sort of friend rate. I don't know. I'm making this up on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I really do like it. I mean, I think. Part of what I love about some of these, I called my, one of the series color in action, but it yeah. is that like, I wanted to feel like it, it had just landed and it, that's, uh -huh. what it, that's what it is, but you're right. Sometimes it's not gonna, it's just sometimes not gonna work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want to see, you said you have a piece that you feel like, um, oh, I totally missed it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm Let's see. Just, I want to see what that is to you. Oh, okay. you'll, you'll see, because this one's not a, this is not a, an opinion. This is, I had one idea and then I came in. This is a definitive. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tried to do layers and the layers just didn't work. So if you look so at good. this top corner, I love oh. it. We're getting, it's getting there. Oh my God. But then I just put the whole thing. And so. Oh, okay. Yeah, different. It's totally yeah. different, but I was trying to like, Pull and I can't, I'm sure I'm too close, but about like two paintings happening yeah, here. Yeah, it kind of feels like there's two paintings. And it's terrible, but what I tried to do was figure out this, I love some of these lines here. Yeah. And I wanted to play with adding more in and it, to it, it just didn't work and I just got mad and I went like this. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have just, some, I scared yeah. that. So I was like, so now I almost feel like I need to just come back in get a good clean spot of white and then try that again. Yeah, I'm wondering if you're, if you're, I mean, I'm just getting to know you and your style. So just take any ideas or leave them. But what if you had like some really well pigmented titanium white, you know, like a, like maybe a fluid or maybe even a acrylic ink, like that's, that's like really highly pigmented and you just kind of like do a puddle, but it, it brings you back to baseline. Ooh. Um, oh, I love that idea. Yeah. yeah. Actually, maybe try like something like this, you know, so it really flows, but it carries a ton of pigment in it. Oh, I um, really love that idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but it is, it's like this interesting thing where like, yeah, I need to find that way through it, but I love that idea. Like it does need to be, 
really opaque to reset it. Right. Right. And you could even, um, do you have, do you have a, like a place you can be dusty where you could have a sander? Cause you could take the texture out too. Oh, that's true. Before you, you do that, like fresh pour, you could, you could kind of grind it back down to smooth if the texture is going to stress you out. Cause I feel like a lot of those bold sweeping, like that amazing rainbow situation you have in the corner really needs like a smooth surface to pull across. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really good idea. And it totally does. It's really funny because I've worked on so much of my career has been on screens. And uh -huh. I think there's something about that smoothness that almost like it's somewhere between a graphic and like yeah. a screen print, but like I want to paint it. So, but I think you're right. Like that smoothness is something I'm definitely drawn to right now rather than really texture. Yeah. Cool. Oh, super fun to, you know, pr problem solve or come up with ideas and yeah, lots of possibilities. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess one last thought when you sent in that question, one last thought I had was, I don't know if it would work for your work, but I saw that you have, um, like they're large canvases. So what if instead of buying them all pre-stretched on stretcher bars, what if you had kind of like one stretcher bar that's like your, it's like your pouring kit or, you know, like I used to do silk painting. And so we would put the silk across and add all these tension things, you know, if it's oh, yeah. a way to get your, your canvas taut or just temporarily kind of tack it on the stretcher bars with a few staples. Yeah. And that way you could do like, you know, you could, you could have rolls of canvas and you can do all the, all the pores. And if they work out, then you like mount them and stretch them. Oh, that's, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if they would be taut enough, but. They might be. I, I re well, I actually, it's so funny. I did recently just purchase unstretched canvas for the very first time. And I was so excited to try it. I was like, but I didn't, I couldn't figure out how to mount it, but I mount it. But I think you're right. Like maybe just temporarily. Yeah. I mean, you can just take a staple gun and like do a shitty job of stretching your canvas, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. like pack it on as long. It's just kind of up to us, like how taut we need it to be to work on it. I also have um, seen like Kathy, a client uh, and fellow artist I've worked with for a long time. She would, um, kind of tack them onto a wood panel, actually. So she had a harder surface and then pull the canvas off and stretch it. Oh. So you can have to tinker with your workflow. But um, the piece that we haven't actually named yet is like how wasteful it can feel. Yeah. We like to make very big paintings, but part of our process involves taking a big risk that can ruin them 30%. I'm just making up a a percentage but can ruin them part of the time yeah mm -hmm. yeah no you're right well and I, I feel like I feel like off stretcher bars would be helpful to just get my mind a little bit calmer about like some of that wastefulness but yeah also I feel like it's practice too like I feel like you have to get your body to understand the marks you're making and I think like in my head I know that but somehow like I sometimes I just have so much resistance when I sit down to do it yeah. <laughs> is it nerve-wracking is it exhilarating like you're just like so physical I, like, know. <laughs> <laughs> I totally love it like yeah. and I could lose hours of time like yeah. I could lose so much time in fact I had to add a new I got like this bucket for my paintbrushes because I I would get so into it that I kept ruining paintbrushes because I like oh yeah just dry on I was like yes. oh no who has time to stop and clean their brushes when you're in like the lusty creation? I am with you. Like, you know, you know, I've been in a good swing of painting when all my brushes are dirty at once. Yes. <laughs> Buckets of them. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. I know. Well, it's, it's so <laughs> a lot. At the end, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. the act of like pouring and moving, like you're, that's like, that's like the whole game. Like you've been prepping everything for that. Yeah. Like your process is so exciting. I um, really, I, I love it. And I feel like, yeah. I feel like what you said at the very start was mm -hmm. it is a big risk and sometimes it won't work. Yeah. And like, that's okay. <laughs> I think just acknowledging that, you know, it's like, it's like anything. If you're, if you're building it on gesture, it's not something that's premeditated. 
you know, measured out, planned out, you can't fix it. But I think that that brings such a fresh energy to your work. And then that translates to the, you know, where it ends up living in the world, like that incredibly bold um, move that you make, like that energy is in that painting forever. So it's really cool work. Thank you. Thank Thank you. I love all these ideas. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's like my favorite thing ever. Okay, let's talk about your, the fact that you've been designing websites for 20 years and a lot of artists I know, myself included, have this thing that I like to call website angst, where I feel like my website is like always five years behind where I actually am in life. Um, and you're about to launch a course to help us. Can you tell us about this? And yes. And I am, how so, do I take it? <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited. Yeah. So the course at the moment is called launch to help people launch their websites, Fabulous. but like a website is constantly, like you said, it's a living, breathing yeah. thing. And what I, I wanted artists to understand it, like creatives and makers of all kinds. Yeah. Like it is there to support you and your work and you're not, it's not the boss of you. And I think a lot of people start it thinking mm -hmm. like now they have a task and they're like the employee of this thing mm -hmm. rather than it being a place to like beautifully showcase your work yeah. and what you're doing and what you're excited about. Um, so anyway, but when I was transitioning from going to web design to painting, mm -hmm. I kept running into artists who were like, can you do my website for me? And at first I was like, oh, this could be good. I would, no, no, I want to be painting. <laughs> so I put together this course that basically walks you through from the very beginning to literally hitting launch. Cool. Um, all of the pieces. And it's kind of like I'm sitting next to you, but you're driving and um, and we have so many tools now that make it so much more accessible. Mm -hmm. Like I think when mm -hmm. I first started, you really needed to have some HTML and some coding yeah. and you had to understand like more of it than you do now. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many great platforms. So yeah. And I think ultimately there's a lot of ways we could look at our website to make sure it's worth our time. Mm -hmm. Instead of just thinking, quote unquote, I need a website, like you really, I start like the first bit of the course is just thinking about why you need it and what you need it to do to be considered successful. Whoa. Because you don't want, yeah, like you don't want a single page up there that you have to spend your time updating and stressing about and <laughs> yeah. like testing and checking for typos if it's not currently yeah. serving you. So, right. we, yeah, there's a lot of like, so what would make what would make a website like it, if I didn't have a website yet and I'm out here hustling and being an artist and etc like what would make a website worth my time if it were the simple beginning of one okay so I'm so excited I'm actually working with um with an artist on her website right now like at this exact same stage yeah um, she's letting me film like record it for the course oh, so um yeah it's it should be good but but to answer your question I think the, the goal would be figuring out how, if somebody comes to your website and does one thing that would make you feel it was a success, what would that be? Uh, so it, it could be, I wish want them to view my work and I, it's okay if they don't purchase it, or it could be, I want them to purchase my work. Yeah. And then from there, you, you basically just ask yourself, and this is like the, my favorite bit of the whole, the whole thing, why will they do that action? So uh -huh. then, uh -huh. you, then that, that just opens up, well, it's because they've imagined it in their space or they've met me or um, they, they've seen it at all angles, they know the story behind it. So everybody's mm -hmm. art is different. So the yeah. why will somebody do the thing you want them to do changes. But yeah. for every artist, I think you need a place that's a landing page so that at the very minimum, your name's up there. And yeah. also I feel so passionately about people pairing their website up with a newsletter oh so even if you're not God, me too. I know. Thank you for the people at the back start a newsletter now no no yeah because social media is going to change all of this yeah. is gonna, like, newsletter shift. is the only thing you own like instagram could go kaput tomorrow people's accounts get hacked all the time blah blah blah, yeah. blah, blah. okay yeah, well, maybe uh, who you did an interview with before she, I have an interview with her in the course and she talks about how her newsletter saved her life, which is total, she needs to tell the story, but it was so powerful and she was yeah. like, wow, that was, 
But yeah, I, so direct access, right? Right. That's amazing. Oh gosh, I want to hear. I want to. I want to know that story about our mutual friend. Um, I mean, I feel like that right freaking now. I'm sa I'm I'm saving my own life. I mean, I'm not gonna die, but I'm going through a divorce. I am like. I'm like asking the universe, do you really want me to do this full time? Like, okay, how can I, how can I go? And so I've got my newsletter and I've got my audience here and I'm like, let's go, let's build something, let's do it. And if I hadn't started my newsletter imperfectly a decade ago, I don't think, it, you know, even, you know, it's just, it's everything. Like that's your direct, that's like your intimate audience who really believes in you. Okay. Yeah. I'm totally going off. Yeah. Tell us about your web design course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, basically we walk through from start to finish, like there's a lot of worksheets involved to figure out all of what you need. Yeah. And then I go through, there's interviews with Nicole Schwartz, who's a lawyer that basically she helps us with our terms and conditions oh. and like privacy cool. policy oh. stuff. Okay. Um, a writer, um, my good friend, Lindsay Grant, she wrote a book, she actually wrote many books, but she has a book on teaching people how to write their memoirs. And while it doesn't seem quite like the same, it translates 100% oh, yeah. to you, like telling yeah. the story. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. feel like, especially with artists, when we do things visually, sometimes we feel like a little, I don't know, hesitant to put words in front of it or words alongside it. But mm -hmm. I think there's so much that, what, especially when you have a big ask, like if it's going to be a large painting, it's going to be a lot of money for somebody. Yeah. Um, they want to hear something. So you might not need to tell them this was inspired directly by that, but to let them understand you helps them understand the art. So Lindsay's, Lindsay's interview was really good. Cool. And then cool. we talked to Mady in the course too. So she talked about her newsletter, cool. um, but there's everything. So like you learn how to do your browser icon and how to make sure you've tested um, on mobile and SEO. So like we walked yeah. through from figuring out what you need all the way to pressing go. So it's, it's been, it's been good. I, I had to do it twice though. So I did the whole thing and then it re-recorded because I had COVID last year and I thought I was over it and I started to do the video recordings. And then once I was really over it, I was, I did new videos and oh no, I sounded so sick. I'm like, I can't handle my own voice. Uh Oh gosh! I did it again, wow. but I think it made it better. Like that yeah. second draft was like yeah. much stronger, but that was that was kind of funny. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I've got yeah. a red nose. That's the thing. You're making it in the middle of a global pandemic. It's also just I don't know about you, but when I made my first pre-recorded beautiful e-course in 2017, I could not stand to watch those videos. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird. Just watch ourselves talk, and I'm kind of, I'm pretty much over it now. But I'm really, I'm, I'm resonating with your process of. Like, <laughs> no, it is. Yeah. It's so funny. Well, and then you've said things so many times, so it's hard to remember. Like, did I actually get it in this video, or and did I yeah. say it at the right, like in the right order? Right. And that, that part, I think doing it a full second time helped me with the ordering. Um, but yeah, I'm with you. I'm like, oh. I'd, I still love the content, but I could, I could take a break from seeing my face. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, it sounds like you've poured so much of your time and your knowledge and your connections and your 20 years of experience in web design. This is going to be awesome. It's called Launch? It's called Launch. And there's awesome. um, a boot camp that's a short version and then the full course, which right now is about six hours, but we're going to have, it's probably going to end up at about nine. We've got one last big Cool. like the full walkthrough yeah. and that I hope everybody watches and fast forward as much as they need because it's like watching me click and drag but yeah the rest of it's more like lecture style with workbook and yeah. whatnot but it well, but I really I felt so like I felt so connected to what I didn't want to like leave 20 years of experience behind but yeah. I didn't want to do it in the same way mm -hmm. and it was really it, I had a little bit of like I just had to chew on it for a while mm -hmm. to figure out like how to translate that but yeah, when you, when you hop careers and you like, you have multiple passions, like it was really, I, once I figured out how I wanted to package the whole yeah. thing, it felt really, really that, good. Like I, I feel like it could cool. actually could be really helpful. I'm so impressed. And so many people, especially to take this course, if people have never designed their own website, 
I think it's so empowering. I remember I had my first website, I had my friend Ben Scott do it and it was built on WordPress and I couldn't do anything to it without getting on his schedule, which, um, you know, I was like a tiny client. So I always kind of felt like I was bothering him. Yeah. And then when I um, decided to migrate my domain over to a Squarespace site, which is kind of like a walled garden, like you can't break it. Yeah. <laughs> Squarespace updates all their own plugins and templates. So I've, um, I've always had help from a virtual assistant, Leslie, but I feel so empowered to tinker around and build a page when I need to build a page or change something out. And so just having that kind of basic fluency in our own website management and, and being able to understand the whole point of the dang thing from the beginning, I think is brilliant. And I took a course from she partnered, it was Tiffany Hahn and her web designer a million years ago, like, you know, when, when I built my current site, and it was similar to your course, like it distilled it into what is the purpose of this thing? And how do you write the copy? And how do you like, why do you need your picture on the homepage and all this stuff? But they're no longer teaching that. And it sounds like you're teaching that with this like fresh energy and your incredible perspective as a working artist. So, you know, heck yeah, I know. Perfect. I, I'm, to, I'm with you. The, the amount of time that people lose because they have to ask somebody else. Yeah. It, and it, it, there's often, there's always going to be a time when you say, I need to pass this off for somebody else. Oh to my you. God. Like, we all buy back our time, but hire a designer to do whole things. But at some point, really having that foundational understanding is very empowering. What you're doing is giving people like the, this awesome way in. That's very cool. I hope so. Uh, I hope so. I'm so excited. But I use all the students, and I'll definitely refer people to you because in my mentoring um, process with people, I am like hell bent on them launching a newsletter by the end of their three months with me. And um, I don't go into like in depth with website, but I just had a client actually, you know, just publish like the homepage with the newsletter sign up, and I I would love to be able to refer on if they really want to go in depth. That sounds, that sounds amazing. I, and I'm happy to give like any, a discount code to like you and your audience. So we'll, well, I don't know where we want to put it, but I'll, I'll come up with something. So just comment or no, I mean, you don't really have to, don't do a discount code. I mean, you can, if you want, but you're just launching this thing. It seems like it's going to be worth it. I, I, I've gotten very positive feedback so far. Like I, yeah. I it's funny. I was asking my friends and like, do you mind? Can you sit in on this? And I'll do some website stuff for you for free. Like it ended up really working out, but it was so helpful to get That's other cool. artists in there. But yeah, yeah. I, but I'm with you. Newsletter and website. I feel like these two yeah. just need to be married yeah. at all times. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need help with mine. I like cannot. Ah, oh, it's so so much fun sitting. Okay, the final thing I wanted to make sure we touch upon is you have this what sounds to me like super cool lifestyle where you've been able to travel the world and work from a laptop, you and your husband, right? Yep. And now that you've taken up this like bodacious large scale painting, you're finding it a little bit more difficult to just hop around. And so you were gonna put it out there if there's any other painters or artists with a workspace and you might wanna do a swap for that sweet loft you can see in the background. <laughs> And I could just go with my daughter down there and whoop it up. That sounds, but I would want to hang out with you if I come down. I know, I would love to be you. Yeah, yeah, but basically, yeah. I, we've, we've almost always been able to work remote. And I still can when I'm working on, like, the website course. But I want yeah. to be able to be inspired by new places as, like, while I'm painting. And so yeah. I thought, you, if anybody out there would like some time in Oakland, California in an art studio, or you could paint or not, but, like, yeah. it's a house, too. But I'd love to, I'd love to connect if anybody's interested. <laughs> so Oakland to, where do you want to go? I mean, all, literally, I want to see this whole world. I hate to tell you I don't have it narrowed down. I want to go everywhere. <laughs> cool. Okay. okay. Awesome. Great. So someone watching this or if someone watching this knows somebody who might be open to a house swap with Jennifer, hook her up. Okay. I love that. This That's is awesome. so good. I, I, We'll see what happens. Why not, right? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Just click it there. I think these conversations are a great place to just practice naming what we want and uh, 
that's the that's the power of community is is people love people love to help right people love to share resources and and make connections especially this community so yeah you know, put it on the grapevine i love yeah. it and i feel like what you said um maybe it was when we were talking before but yeah. like being really specific about you want is helpful like to say like is this what i'm supposed to be doing right now because this is how i imagine it uh -huh. it makes it, it's easier to get it back when you ask for it specifically yeah <laughs> yeah that's cool totally okay well i'll be specific i want a vfp client i want someone to sign up for three months i can love the shit out of you and help you make a new body of work and launch it and i have space for someone to start may 1st so definitely let me know if you're ready for my mentoring program. That's our, okay. That's so good. You knew exactly. I love it. <laughs> I, do. I want, I want a new client. Okay. Um, uh, I think we should wrap up this conversation and it has been such a pleasure. Um, do you have an email list people can join by yes. the way? Okay. Yes. It's on my, on my website, which is just jenniferarst.com. A R Z T Z Venti. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, it's been such a pleasure to hang out with you in this conversation, and I look forward to following your work and watching you make those bold moves on your canvas. You're inspiring me. The thing I really want to do is like really quick gestural drawings at the very last part of these layered paintings, kind of similar, like risk taking. Yeah, really appealing. So, respect for your work and uh, thanks for your time and. Thanks for coming on the Art Friend Show. Thank you so much. This is so amazing. And I am just blown away by how you've been consistent with it. Like, it is, I was like, this is going to be a big project when I heard about it. I'm like, yeah, you can, you can. You can. <laughs> on, that, on day one, I was like saying it and I was like, really? <laughs> I, think, I think this is day 55 now. Oh my God. So, yeah. It's incredible. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, we're, I mean, it's the power of like community, public accountability. It's actually very enjoyable. I, I get up in the morning, like stoked. So yeah, it's, it's been, a, it's, it's been an incredible experience so far. That's amazing. So, yeah. I am so impressed. I am so impressed. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to figure out how to make it, you know, into a visual YouTube show and all the things that are to come, you know, I'm thinking about maybe a Kickstarter or grant funding or something because it's definitely going to be beyond my individual capacity. But I think it's like the community response is phenomenal. I haven't even pitched people yet. Yeah. Like, this is all just you signed yourself up. And if you're watching this, by the way, and you're an artist, come on the show. You can sign yourself up. I have a link in my profile um, to be interviewed. And then, yeah, so I feel like this could go on for years and years because there's so many people to talk to about their work. Yeah. I I agree. It's such a good yeah. idea. It's yeah. such a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I, you know, listened finally. It knocked at me for years. So, yeah. Okay, honey, I'm going to end this one. I'll debrief with you in the Zoom. Thank you for watching. If you're viewing this, comment. It actually really makes a difference for uh, the visibility. So, comment and tag Jennifer and whoop it up for her. Uh, share it in your stories, send it to your friends, the people you always send memes to, send this. Be like, hey, you should binge watch these art fun interviews. They're actually really entertaining. <laughs> and um, I'm Monamika. I do art mentoring. You can hire me for private mentoring. You can sign up for Art Friends School and do like a class with me once a month. And we're making the Art Friends show. So, great. Okay, <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs> I'd love to have you inside of Art Friends School, where we go deeper into these topics. Follow the link that's in the show notes or find it on my website at onamika.com.